Hey Robot Makers, I want to let you know about a problem that's currently affecting macOS users who've just upgraded to the new Ventura operating system. So this is currently affecting people who want to flash their Raspberry Pi Pico, their Feather, Huzzah or Microbit with the latest firmware. And the drag and drop functionality has changed in Ventura, which means that there's now a bug. Let me show you what this actually looks like. So over here on my desk, I've got my Raspberry Pi Pico, got this connected by USB and I can see on my computer that it's connected there as RPI RP2. So this is a brand new Raspberry Pi Pico. It's never been flashed before and I want to upgrade it to the latest version of MicroPython or CircuitPython. So I'm going to drop this Adafruit CircuitPython 7.3.3 onto the RPI RP2 drive and let go. And then we get this error. It says the operation can't be completed because of an unexpected error. And the error code is 100093. And you'll see this error. This is to do with extended attributes. And we'll have a look at what those are in a moment. So if I click OK, we can see there that it looks like it's uploaded a file to the, the drive. It's zero bytes in size. And it hasn't done its usual refresh where it reboots the, the Pico and has the latest firmware installed. So let's just delete that. So this is obviously a problem if you're trying to upgrade from an older version of firmware to a newer version. So let's try, drop the Pimroni Pico, drag that across, get the exact same error code, get the exact same result again. We'll get a zero file length and we haven't actually flashed the firmware to the drive at all. There is a workaround for this. I'll show you what the workaround is. If you load up Terminal, and if you're on a Mac and you've never used Terminal before, you can find this in the Applications folder and it's underneath the Utilities. If you go to Applications, scroll to your Utilities folder, go into the Utilities folder, and then you've got Terminal just there, so you can double click that to launch it. So how we copy the files then is we use the command line. We need to type in CP, which is the Unix copy command. We need to do dash and then capital X, and this means ignore any extended attributes. And then we need to give the name with the file so let's use the circuit python one and then we need to copy it to the volume so we do slash volumes capital v at the beginning and then we do rpi rp2 and if i press return it will copy that file without using finder behind the scenes and it will actually work so in a couple of seconds time you'll see that that will complete and then we can now open up thonny and we can start coding as usual so i can open up thonny now and we can click the stop start button. I can see there I'm on 7.3.3 circuit Python and everything works as expected. So I can now, if I wanted to upload that file, for example, we can see that that's gonna work fine. What are extended attributes and why are they causing this problem? So back in the day when the very first Macintosh computers came out, I've got one on my desk over here. This is a very old Macintosh SE30. So back in the day, macOS was actually called system software and each file would actually be represented as two separate files internally that they call these forks. There was a data fork for storing data and then there was a resource fork for restoring things like icons or metadata about that particular file. So for example, if you had a Word document the icon for the Word document would be stored in the resource fork and the actual text of the document would be saved in the data fork. And this has persisted throughout all the generations of macOS right up to the current day where we're using the Ventura operating system on a completely different code base. But the files are still represented as a single file to the, to the user through the operating system. But behind the scenes, if you're using a file system like FAT32, FAT, which are from the Windows world rather than the Macintosh world, it actually had to split those two files into two pieces. And you often see them, if you look onto a drive that's been connected to a Macintosh and a Windows PC, you'll see these dot underscore files with the same name as the main file. And that's again where it stores these resource forks, the metadata for these files. And often these are completely empty, but it has to do this as just as part of its housekeeping to maintain the integrity of the file system. And one of the issues we think is happening here is that when you drive and drop that file onto the, the virtual drive, the, the fake drive. The behavior is now changed in Ventura from previous versions and it's either doing a check to see have those metadata files been correctly written and when it looks and they're not there because it's a very special operation when you drag and drop a UF2 file, it doesn't actually copy the file onto the file system, it uploads it into the firmware of the, the device that's connected. So it's actually not writing it to the file system and this is perhaps where macOS is getting concerned or confused and saying that an error has occurred. So there's been quite a few blog articles written about this in more detail if you want to read up. So you can go over to the GitHub repository for the Raspberry Pi Pico SDK and you can see there that there's a cannot drag a UF2 to RPI RP2 folder on the macOS Ventura and they've got a bug reference there. There's also a finder error on the Microbit help and support page. You can find that under that article there. I'll put all links to these in the description as well if you want to look these up. And it's the exact same issue 
with the micro bit as well. So the BBC micro bit works exactly the same, but instead of the US2 files, they're .hex files. It's the error code 100093. And then there's the Ventura problem blog post that's on the Raspberry Pi news site. Alistair Allen has written quite a detailed description of the issue, the conversations that have been had so far with Apple indirectly, which is a little bit frustrated, I think, for everybody involved, and also what the workarounds are. So we've talked about the workaround using the copy uh, dash capital X, the file you want to upload and the path. If you've never used the terminal before, this can be a little bit intimidating, but honestly, it's fine. If you're a coder, you'll get used to this kind of thing. And then there's also a specific tool called the Pico tool. I've got this open up on another tab here. So there is the Raspberry Pi official repository on GitHub and Pico tool, which can also help you upload files um, to your Pico. So I do hope this bug gets squashed pretty soon. I'm a, a big developer of the Raspberry Pi Pico using MicroPython. And this is something that will come up every now and again, not too often. I mean, I don't have to upgrade the firmware too often, but I do often change around what's on here, maybe switch between CircuitPython, MicroPython, and the C++ libraries. And that doesn't mean I have to flash the device. So I've got to work around. We can work with that, but just to let you know, and if we hear anything else from Apple and they do fix this bug, we'll let you know about this. So I have heard that people who are on the beta program for macOS, uh, they say this bug is still there in 13.1. So it, it's still present in the latest version of their release. So hopefully it won't be too long before they squash this one. And then we'll be back to where we were happily developing our software on our CircuitPython and MicroPython devices. So let me know if you've come across this, if you have any thoughts about this, if I've made any technical mistakes in this presentation that uh, you need to correct, let me know in the comments below and I shall see you next time. So bye for now.